Hello my friend, today I want to talk about the benefits of going through short periods of uh, physical and mental uh, discomfort. Um, there's actually a, um, a science um, that is dedicated to this aspect, it's called um, homesis, and they look at the benefits um, of different uncomfortable physical and mental stimuli um, and the effect, the short-term effect afterwards. Um, there's a great um, research that they did with worms that demonstrates this principle. Um, so they had worms that usually live best um, with an outside temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. And um, they exposed these worms for to 35 degrees Celsius for two uh, degrees, sorry, for two hours per day. And they realized that their life expectancy of um, these worms increased by 25%. Um, there's an optimal time, so whenever they did for a longer period of time, like around four or six hours, then the life expectancy of the worms uh, decreased. So it is um, important to know that obviously there's always an optimal stimuli. The same we have with uh, exercise, for example. So exercise is an increased, it's actually a stress that we apply to the body. And it's a short, relatively short period of time and after the exercise, the body will um, react to the higher demand, right? There's an optimal time, so um, obviously you want to gradually increase either the length, intensity, um, if you lift the weight over time, um, and the body adapts then. Um, there are other aspects that you can use, so cryotherapy, for example, um, you go like in a cryo chamber, um, maybe three minutes. Um, usually they use minus 200 to 275 degrees Celsius, um, Fahrenheit, I'm sorry. And um, that has a lot of positive effects. Um, so you have a lot of, you get very clear, um, you get a lot of neural um, transmitter release. Um, it reduces your inflammation in the body. That's why a lot of athletes use it. Um, your mood increases. Um, there are benefits to when if you have arthritis and so on. Um, the we have uh, similar effects when you do intermittent fasting. You know, so not eating for a period of twelve to sixteen hours is is a good uh, standard. Some people extend it; they don't eat for two hours uh, for two days. There are different ways of doing it. The key is really to um, the back and forward, so the body has to adapt. Um, and um, there is something called electroconvulsive shock therapy where they apply um, electrodes on your brain and basically shock your, your brain. It has to be in a medical setting, um, but it's the same thing. Um, out, outside uh, exposure and then the positive effect in this case on um, mood, on PTSD and other, other aspects. Um, the same you can do in a very a very simple aspect. So, when you do um, when you ex execute unpleasant tasks, something that you don't want to do, so you're pushing yourself, overcoming yourself to do this uh, task. Um, initially, dopamine will go down, but then afterwards, once you uh, um, finish the task, your dopamine level will will go up. So you get this dopamine kick which is non-addictive. Um, so for example, when you have, uh, on the other side, let's say you, you do, um, you're addicted to your cell phone, like scrolling on Facebook or some other app, um, then over time, the body needs more and more of that dopamine kick um, because the dopamine receptors are slowly numbing. So that's where this addictive behavior comes and you have to have more input, a longer period of, of the dopamine re release to get the same emotional benefits in a way. And eventually, when you don't get the stimulus, then your discomfort and um, pain level basically goes up because pleasure and pain always go in, it's basically a scale. Yeah. Um, so I hope um, this was interesting for you. Um, I hope it encourages you to try some of these um, aspects, uh, specifically the um, task-oriented aspect, you know, do every day some 
one at least one or several tasks that you actually don't enjoy doing and then reap the emotional and then also over time uh, the other benefits that will come with it.